So AI is the hot topic of the moment, and I'm sure you've had a chance to play around with ChatGPT and its competitors, and I'm sure that you can also see its massive potential. But you know what? One question just kept popping up in my mind. Could ChatGPT actually formulate for me? Would AI be able to even design skincare? Because creating a beauty product requires a formulaic approach where you think about layering in the ingredients to create a formulation that's effective, that's safe, that's stable, and of course, pleasant to use. So in theory, I kept thinking it must be possible for AI to formulate. And on top of that, our marketing team at Formula Botanica kept challenging me on whether we could use ChatGPT to formulate. So I decided to give it a go. And that's why this week's podcast is all about the way I asked AI to design a solid serum bar for me. And yes, the disaster that had followed, because spoiler alert, it turns out that ChatGPT isn't a very good formulator yet. And this is, of course, also a natural follow on from the podcast interview I released with Jan Chilvers, co-founder of Cavallo last week. So Jan and I discussed the ways that AI will become part of the beauty industry. And he talked about the opportunities and limitations of AI, which is exactly why I wanted to put this into practice and see just how good or bad AI actually is when it comes to formulation. And you know what? It turns out it sucks. So let's get started with this week's podcast and I'll explain exactly what happened. Hi, it's Lorraine Dahlmeyer, Chartered Environmentalist, Biologist and CEO of award-winning online organic cosmetic formulation school, Formula Botanica. I host the Green Beauty Conversations podcast and these are my Green Beauty opinions in which I share my takeaways from the podcast interview we released last week and set you a challenge to make the green beauty sector a better place. If you want to be the first to hear all of my latest episodes, make sure you subscribe to this podcast. So let me walk you through exactly what I did and the formulation conversation that I had with ChatGPT. Because honestly, it was fascinating. So firstly, I decided on my rough formulation specification. I decided on what I was going to ask ChatGPT to make. Because after all, I couldn't leave ChatGPT in the dark. I had to tell it what I wanted it to formulate for me. So I decided I was going to make a solid facial serum bar that contains vitamin C. It's quite innovative, definitely on trend and something a little bit different, but still quite simple. So the first thing I did was to ask ChatGPT to write me a product brief for that specific formulation. I said I was targeting eco-conscious shoppers and that I wanted the formulation to be longer lasting, smell heavenly, feel luxurious, and have a fairly neutral color. So in doing that, I set the basic parameters before we even got started with the formulation. So ChatGPT did quite well with this request, and it gave me a pretty decent product brief, actually. It told me which key ingredients it recommended. It gave me advice on how to position the product in the market. It had some thoughts on retail opportunities. And then it gave me some bland statements about product shape and pricing, which didn't actually really say anything. So to quote specifically from what ChatGPT said, it said, the price point should reflect the high quality, luxurious nature of the ingredients and the sustainable practices employed in its creation while also being competitive within the market. So that there is a masterclass in how to use words without actually saying anything. But you know, I I wasn't really there for the product brief. I could have prodded ChatGPT a bit more and probably got more information, but in reality, I wanted it to formulate for me. So then I next asked ChatGPT to formulate my solid serum bar, which it did. So it gave me a formulation that contained several well-known natural foundation ingredients, such as shea butter, cocoa butter, beeswax, jojoba oil. And then it included an oil-soluble vitamin C, which is what I told it to do. Then to finish off the formulation, ChatGPT said, now include four grams of an essential oil blend and one gram of a natural colorant. And it provided me with a few examples of ingredients I could use. In other words, it gave me a pretty bland formulation and it did so by weight, not by percentage. And then it didn't tell me exactly which ingredients to use. I couldn't do much with this, of course, because this wasn't an exact formulation. And I certainly wouldn't be able to take this straight into production, for instance. So undeterred, I went back to chat GPT and I asked it to be more exact. And I gave it further specifications and told it that I didn't want my bar to smell of cocoa butter. I wanted the formulation to be safe and stable and comply with regulations in terms of dermal limits. And I told it that I wanted it to add at least one or two other oil-soluble actives to create a more luxurious formulation. 
So ChatGPT then came back with a slightly different formulation. It replaced cocoa butter for mango butter, and it added in new oil-soluble extracts in the form of squalane, coenzyme Q10, and bisabolol. So far, so good, right? However, it then still told me to add 2% of an essential oil blend, but it didn't tell me which essential oils to use. And note that it had now changed from working in weights to working in percentages, which is also what we do at Formula Botanica. So back I went to ChatGPT and I then asked it to create an essential oil blend that smells luxurious. So it told me to use sandalwood, rose absolute and bergamot, which are of course lovely essential oils. And it then also reminded me that essential oils are highly concentrated and potent, so should be used sparingly. This is good. It then told me to adjust the proportions to get the right scent I was looking for and told me to let the blend sit for a few days before making the final judgment. Now, again, that's not particularly helpful when I was asking ChatGPT to formulate for me. And again, it kept telling me to do it myself. So I kept going. I then asked it if my essential oil blend met dermal limit requirements, and it gave me dermal limit requirements as set by IFRA, but it got it wrong. It told me that IFRA recommends a maximum concentration of 0.6% rose absolute in products applied to the face. And this is completely wrong. And it certainly flies in the face of what we teach at Formula Botanica and what you'd find on the IFRA website. So this response was the first one that really set alarm bells ringing for me. However, then it concluded with the sentence, you'll need to adjust the essential oil blend to ensure it's safe for use, which again is entirely unhelpful when I've just asked ChatGPT to formulate it for me and make sure it was safe for use. So ChatGPT and I then ended up stuck in this loop, this endless loop of doom for a while, where I kept asking it to confirm the exact essential oil percentages in the exact blend and to ensure it complied with dermal limit requirements. And it kept giving me confused answers that didn't seem entirely right. So clearly something wasn't working there. But most importantly, throughout this entire exchange, ChatGPT kept telling me, get this, it kept telling me to hire a cosmetic chemist to finalize my formulation. I am not joking. And it would say statements such as, it's often necessary to work with a cosmetic chemist and or cosmetic regulation consultant when scaling up from a homemade recipe to a commercially sold product. And it didn't just say it once. No, instead it told me to work with a chemist practically every single time I asked it to calculate something for my formulation. And by the end of this exchange, as you can probably imagine, I was feeling pretty annoyed. So once I'd got as far as I could with the formulation, I changed my approach and I started challenging ChatGPT on why it wanted me to hire a chemist. So ChatGPT immediately came back with its arguments. It said that chemists will better understand how to work with complex ingredients We'll be able to undertake safety tests, we'll understand how to comply with regulations, we'll look after product performance, and we'll be aware of calculations for allergies and sensitivities. Well, I was not impressed at this point, and so I went back to ChatGPT and I told it that I was going to refute every single point it made. After all, you wouldn't necessarily hire a cosmetic chemist to undertake your safety or stability testing. This would be done by a specialist lab which may or may not employ chemists or pharmacists or other specialists, or you can do some of it yourself. Regulatory compliance doesn't necessarily come from a cosmetic chemist that generally requires you to work with a safety assessor. I then, of course, also made the point that formulating with complex ingredients and undertaking allergen calculations and assessing the function of your product can also be done very well by a home formulator. Well, listeners, you will be glad to hear that ChatGPT agreed with me. And eventually it concluded with the statement, you're correct that with the right knowledge, resources and careful practice, a skilled home formulator can create a safe, effective and regulatory compliant cosmetic product. And yes, it is absolutely true that many successful indie beauty brands have been started by non-chemists who have become self-educated in formulation or presumably taken a course with Formula Botanica. So when I read that, I felt vindicated. ChatGPT told me I was correct, so I was hopeful that I would have taught it to change its tune. And then, unfortunately, I went back to ChatGPT a month later to ask it how to formulate something else for me as I was testing it again. And we got stuck in the same loop of it telling me to hire a cosmetic chemist. However, I will take it for a brief moment. The AI and I saw eye to eye, but I guess we still have a long way to go. So my challenge to you for this week is twofold. 
Firstly, go and play around with ChatGPT and have fun with it. It is quite an entertaining experience, particularly if you do get it to formulate for you. And secondly, remember that AI is a miraculous, wonderful tool. But firstly, it isn't yet going to replace the formulation community. And you know what? It's missing its humanity. Formulation is a skill that involves not only understanding the technicalities and legalities of putting together a cosmetic, but it also requires being able to experiment, to touch, to feel, to smell. And you certainly don't need to be a chemist to do so. Most importantly, however, we are far away from AI being able to do any of that. So it would be good for us to remember that at all times. Thank you for listening to my Green Beauty Opinions. Remember to visit the Formula Botanica website at formulabotanica.com to try our free online formulation course. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the Green Beauty Conversations podcast, please make sure you do so now in your favorite podcast app. Leave me a five-star review if you enjoy the conversations I host, and I'll be back soon with my next episode. 